This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We once again have another phenomenal pitching slate lined up for tonight, and it lines well with having Rob Freeman pitching Ninja on to break down his favorite strikeout props of the day. We'll break down those over at FanDuel Sportsbook, talk about some guys who could potentially rack up the most strikeouts for tonight, and I'll talk about some NASCAR in Richmond later on today. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and over on FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here, as mentioned, by Rob Friedman. You can check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find him on Peacock, MLB, MLB on Fox, and, of course, at FanDuel Sportsbook with all those profit boosts as well. Rob, happy Friday to you. How are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you? I am fantastic. I got to watch. Uh, I'm very jealous because yesterday's guest on the show, uh, Dr. Red Fang, he, we had to record early because he was going to Detroit to watch Shohei Otani pitch. And... Boy, did he. My goodness. Uh, putting up basically the performance of a lifetime. I know it's it's not an Otani slate today, but like, my goodness, just filthy across the board, both as a pitcher. And I know, I know, Rob, we want to root against Dingers here in general, but like, I think we can make an exception for Shohei, correct? 100%. Shohei is a pitcher first, so we, okay. we get credit for all of his home runs, too. Okay. I that was amazing, that. though, wasn't it? Like, oh, that my was gosh. Thick. Yeah. Like I was, I was jealous when Ed said it. And then once that happened, I was like, oh, wow, he was at that game and I was not. And I'm like, man, uh, I need to find a way. I need to look at when the angels are in Chicago next, uh, pop out for that game. Cause he'll be there and they're making gains. Well, I'm going to ask you about Lucas Giolito later on, uh, see what we can expect from him making his debut for the angels today in a second, but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread, wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple podcasts or on Spotify. And these shows do go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus as well. Next week, no video because I am gone. Uh, Tom, Vecchio filling in for me, but we'll still have the audio version here on the podcast feed. But let's take a look at this again. Chuck loaded Friday night slate here, Rob, and a lot of fun pitchers on tonight's slate. We got your guy, Braxton Garrett. I feel like I'm okay in <laughs> labeling him as being your guy, but also, I guess, some under the radar names like Max Scherzer, Garrett Cole, Kevin Gosman. Ever heard, of, heard him? of him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you look at tonight's slate, Rob, which pitching uh, it's strikeout props. Are you most keyed in on at FanDuel Sportsbook? You know, you got a matchup of two of my under the radar guys with, okay. with Garrett and Olsen in that game. And I actually, re I've been following Reese Olsen. This sounds silly, but I, but it's ever since he was in high school because yeah. he played, he was a, a travel ball player that we coached against back in the day. And I always liked the way he threw and it's great to see him throwing that well in the show. And I think, you know, he's, he's got a lot of promise. I kind of really like his stuff. So that's a matchup that I'm looking at and I'm, I'm actually picking both of those in my parlay today um, to, I think I have Olsen for five K's and, and Garrett for six K's or more. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them surpass it pretty easily. Yeah, Olsen over four and a half is minus 134. Braxton Garrett over five and a half is minus 124. And Olsen, you said you've been watching him for a long time. What it, at that time kind of keyed you in on the fact that, oh, this guy might be kind of special? So what I liked about him is he was a smaller frame pitcher who threw hard. So he had to move really well, and he did um, in, order to, in order to throw hard. I just liked his mechanics. Um, and that's really what jumped out at me because I remember walking by the field with my son going, I really like the way this dude throws. Didn't know anything about him. And right. then he ends up, you know, he was he committed to Georgia Tech then got drafted before he went to Tech, and then uh, you know, now the rest is history. And in his debut, he was shoving. He was fantastic. And now facing off with the Marlins in this game, over four and a half strikeouts, minus 134. Other side of Bra is Braxton Garrett. And uh, again, five and a half, the number for him, over is minus 124. And Garrett is a guy we discussed a lot. And Rob, I think the thing that's most impressive about him is he gets strikeouts with a low pitch count, which means, A, he's efficient. He he is not wasting pitches, but also he's pretty dang good. And I feel like if we ever got Braxton Garrett fully unleashed, and obviously I'm not asking for that because the Marlins know him better than I do. So I'm not saying they shouldn't handle him the way they have. They, are, they know him better than I do. They're doing the right thing here. But like, if we ever got like a 97 pitch Braxton Garrett regularly, 
he could go bananas. What do you see about him in this matchup here with Detroit? Well, I mean, I like him versus Detroit, number one, because, I mean, I kind of like anybody against him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Uh, but but he's, got, he's got really good stuff, and you don't yeah. see it very often. Like, he's, his breaking stuff is, is fantastic. And it's just one of those things that he constantly is, I don't know why, under the radar type guy. He doesn't throw hard. I think that's probably why. He just strikes people out. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. Anytime that he goes deeper into games and hopefully he's at the point where maybe they let him go a tiny, tiny bit deeper. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I look at him as a strikeout guy. He's good. Yeah, and again, he's doing this. He's justifying five and a half strikeouts as his prop, which I've taken over on quite a bit. Um, he's justifying it at a low pitch count, so and that's accounted for here. So we're liking both Olsen over four and a half at minus 134, and Garrett over five and a half, minus 124 in that same game. Marlins and Tigers, you get to begin your Friday a little bit early, too, with that game, with it being a 640 first pitch there. Okay, which other ones are you looking at for tonight, Rob? So I was looking at Brady Singer. I think he's figured some things out. And he's another one of those guys that maybe isn't that flashy and tends to, I mean, when he's on can really strike folks out and he's pitching against a team that strikes out a lot. So we'll see. They definitely do. Uh, that yeah. is definitely very <laughs> accurate. Uh, singer strikeout profit fan duel sports book over five and a half is plus one thirty, And, Earlier this year, Rob, he was really struggling. And that surprised me because I liked Singer a lot last year, traded for him in my Dynasty League as a result of that, and didn't get off to a great start. But it seems like over the past, I don't know, like 10 or so starts, it's 11 starts where he's gone back to that slider a bit more. He's always used a lot, but like a little bit more usage there. Is it a comfort thing? Did he like, did he just find, refines the groove with that pitch leading to more strikeouts? Or what do you think keyed in that surge? Yeah, I mean, I noticed his slider location wasn't great when he was struggling, and he really needs all of his pitches to work well in order to pitch well. He's a competitor. That's one thing I like about him. But it wasn't all; it just wasn't clicking location-wise, and now it appears to be. We'll see. I mean, I thought I thought last outing was a pretty good jump for him, and hopefully he's figured it out. And if he does, expect a big game out of him. Yeah, the Twins active roster against righties, a 28% strikeout rate, which is a monster number. Buxton likely back tonight, but that doesn't hurt the strikeout number, at least. So it helps the offense for sure, but the strike from a strikeout perspective does not hurt there. Okay, so Singer over five and a half, currently plus 130 over FanDuel Sportsbook. Not a bad number there. So that's the strikeout props uh, we're talking about for tonight. I did want to ask you about Lucas Giolito, though, because, Rob, we can a lot of times see... Pitchers make changes when they change teams. Uh, we saw Jordan Montgomery last year regaining faith in his fastball. We saw it with, uh, I think, Kyle Gibson when he got traded one year. Had some key changes that really benefited him. You, you see it a lot where the, you get a new face, you get a new pitching coach, and maybe it's just a fresh set of eyes. Not saying that like the old staff wasn't good, but like a, a fresh set of eyes, a new start. So when you're watching Lucas Giolito tonight making his debut for the Angels, what are you going to be watching most heavily there? To me, it's the extra sense of urgency. Like Gio is a pitcher. He pitches on emotion a little bit. He can be, when he's on, he, he has that little, he gets locked in and you can tell from his face. Yeah. I think another team trusting him to help him in his, in a playoff run, maybe bumps him up another level and he feeds off that emotion. It wouldn't surprise me to see him do really well. I also think it helps the team. It helps the angels in general to feel yeah. like, they got they they're now adding pieces instead of selling things off down the stretch. And, you know, players feel that you, you like to think everybody plays their hardest every game and they do. But there's a little extra when you feel like you, you your owner has your back. Yeah. And I've been really impressed with their offense ever since Mike Trout got hurt. They've been phenomenal. Um, and if you re -add, if you're able to re -add Mike Trout to that lineup, if they can keep Moniac in there too, um, you know, that could be a really fun team and adding Lucas Giolito, Ronaldo Lopez. That's a pretty fun addition for that team as well. So I'm excited they did that because I want Shohei Otani to be on a relevant team. I didn't want to get traded because I just see it feels wrong. Um, but like, I want to see him on a relevant team in august september and it seems like with the way the offense is hitting i think they've got a chance to be that and we'll see if Giolito can be a part of that beginning tonight all right final question rob we don't have the strikeout leader prop up yet over at FanDuel sports but because some teams have not yet announced their starters buoy on them but when you're looking at the pitchers on tonight's slate who do you think are the main contenders to lead this slate in strikeouts for tonight I was looking at Gosman. Um, I think, you know, the Angels K a decent amount. Gosman gets a lot of Ks. 
he would be my pick if I'm going to just pick one. I think Cole's got a little tougher matchup, yeah. even though he can, you know, you never know with Cole. Like if he is, he, he is a bully on the mound when he gets going and I love it about him. The question is like, I, I pitched against the Orioles earlier in the year was, eh, and I, you know, I just don't know. I think it's shakier. I think Gosman would be my pick. Yeah, we did see some interest in Gosman's strikeout over because that number did just move. Over seven and a half just moved to minus 134. So people are betting the over on that one. That could correlate well to things here as well. Any dark horses? Like, do you think that Garrett's in contention for this one? Or is that a bit too much given the reduced pitch count? If he has, the, right. If they let him go, like he can't, he can get double digit strikeouts and it's going to take yeah. double digits to win today. Probably low double digits. Yeah. Can he get there? He can get 11. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be that surprised to see him do it. I don't know what his number is going to be. It wouldn't right. be my favorite for it, but right. it's definitely possible. Right. I think the benefit for Gosman too is he's pitching likely indoors. I think that roof will be closed tonight, and you got a lot of hot weather on the East Coast. Like Scherzer, low strikeout matchup. It's a revenge game, which is again worth thirty percent bump, um, <laughs> and that obviously matters a lot. Uh, but a lower strikeout matchup. He's outdoors. It's warm, cold. The exact same thing. Whereas Gosman likely indoors for tonight, which does help him too. Okay. Wheeler might be yeah. someone to look at too, actually. Yes. I mean, uh, high strikeout matchup, bad weather there, not like in terms of heat, but like they might get rain uh, yeah. in that game. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but I like Wheeler too. He's been pitching. He, you know, he's Zach Wheeler. Of course, he's always pitching well, but like, especially recently, even though he's on the road, I think he'd be a pretty good contender for that one as well. Yep. All righty. So people want to check out, uh, they could include that uh, strikeout leader. Actually, it just got popped up right here. So um, if they, people want to include the daily strikeout there leader market, Rob, they could actually boost that. Sounds like you got a profit boost over at FanDuel once again for this week. Yep, but it's only good for parlay. So you got to okay. take that as a parlay, add Gosman in there, and then parlay something else with it. And you can definitely do it. It's got to be over plus 400 total, three legs or more. But yeah, you get a 30% profit boost at FanDuel. All righty. Love to hear it. Uh, Kevin Gosman is a favorite at plus 310. Uh, they were dark, listening to us. My dark horse is 16 to 1. Bobby Miller kind of thought that he might be interesting. He's been throwing fewer sinkers recently, and sinkers are annoying to me as someone who wants strikeouts. So I've been happy <laughs> about that. He's 16 to 1. I can't get behind that, unfortunately. But, you know, I thought I'd give him a look. But 16 to 1 is too short for me to get there. Yeah, probably right. Oh, well, right. We, we tried at least. Garrett at 26 to 1, though. That's I mean... long enough. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely long enough. In that matchup at, at home, yeah, pennant know, race man. or a, you know uh, a playoff race going on, I think that's enticing. It's worth chucking something on it, right? Like, I think so too. I think that's my favorite of the ones here because Gosman three ten is kind of short. Um, it is. I think that Scherzer, even though it's a low strikeout match of a twelve to one, is pretty enticing. And then I would say Garrett at twenty six, the two I would like most relative to their numbers. Yeah, I might take a look at that one too. I I think I like uh, 26 it. seems right. That's they, they were waiting. They wanted to get you in, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I feel exactly. like 26 is long enough to, uh, to bait the hook there. All it right. Is. That is Rob Freeman. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at pitching ninja. Check out that profit boost over at FanDuel sports. Again, a 30% profit boost on parlays, three plus legs over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, you can check out his strikeout props there as well. Check him out at Peacock MLB MLB on Fox. And of course you're uncovering the spread as well. Rob, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the baseball tonight. We'll talk to you once again in two weeks. Awesome. Great talking to you again. As always. All right. Thank you, Rob. And we'll talk to you again in a couple weeks here to talk more strikeout props on the show. Always fun to get uh, some Braxton Garrett discussion here on the podcast. We're going to dive into my thoughts on NASCAR enrichment here in just one second. But first, we've got some exciting news over at Number Fire beginning now. You can find all the Number Fire content from the analysts you know over at a new home called FanDuel Research. FanDuel Research is on the FanDuel domain, meaning you can now do your own research on the same site where you place bets and submit daily fantasy lineups and don't worry all the number fire tools are still in place over at numberfire.com so your daily process can remain the same for now as a thank you for your years of loyalty we'll be running free rolls over on FanDuel research now through the end of nfl season to check out next week free roll once it is up go up to fanduel.com slash research and check out the link for a free roll for the nfl hall of fame game coming up next week get that over on fanduel.com slash research let's dig in now to nascar at richmond they are at richmond for this weekend and it is one of the more predictable tracks on the circuit, not just because they've been there once already this year, but also because it's a short flat track, which tend to be, uh, they tend to be more predictable, but also they just don't see a lot of crashes at Richmond, which means 
it's less likely that a contender will get wiped out by something stupid. Um, and that's always going to be beneficial for us when it comes to betting. Because we know who will be fast this weekend. So you're not getting a lot of surprises at Richmond. But I do think there's a guy who is like a somewhat longer shot who could potentially win this race. Now, not betting him to win. I don't think there's, I think I don't think it's the best route for doing so. But I do think Brad Keselowski is a fantastic bet to podium and to finish inside the top 10. We're going to break down why uh, or what I think of those two markets and why I want to go to those two markets here in just one second. But first, let's talk about why my model is on Keselowski for this week. It's because Keselowski's had two clear strengths since joining RFK Racing. He has been great on tracks with heavy tire fall off, and he's been great on short flat tracks. His teammate Chris Busher nearly won this race last year, a race that is a higher high tire fall off track and um, is a short flat track. So checks both those boxes. So Chris Busher nearly won last year, finished third. Keselowski ran top five in Homestead with heavy tire fall off, and he was also top five in Darlington earlier on this year. So in tracks with heavy tire fall, fall off, RFK has been at its best. So, but also Keselowski has been great on short tracks. There are short flat tracks this year. He had a top nine average running position in all three non-Martinsville races on short flat tracks. He finished fifth in New Hampshire, the most recent one. I think that's actually a bit more helpful than usual. It's always helpful for Richmond because it is a short flat, but uh, they used a softer tire compound this year. So I think that the overlap between those two races may be even greater than usual. He did finish top 10 at Richmond earlier on this year as well. So that's why my model likes Keselowski. And I think you could consider him to win. He's 24 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. I do show value there because I have his win odds at 5.5%, but the implied odds are 4%. So a pretty decent edge on Keselowski to win. And I did take him at 31 myself earlier on this week elsewhere. But I think the better value is in the podium market because you got Martin Truex Jr. who is on a heater right now and is phenomenal at Richmond. Denny Hamlin, exact same thing. Kyle Larson, William Byron, you've got four guys I think are a clear step above the rest of the pack. And in order for Keselowski to beat them, he's going to need a lot of juice. For a podium, it's not quite as bad. And I do show value in the podium market as well. It's not just like, I want to avoid Truex, let's go podium instead. The implied odds for Keselowski to podium at plus 750 or 11.8 percent. You can or could yesterday get at least some uh, plus 850s out there. But at plus 750 at FanDuel, implied odds are 11.8 percent. I have Keselowski at 16.4 percent for a top three, so it gives me more flexibility to get around Truex and Hamlin, and the edge there is pretty big as well. So I like that quite a bit. I want to pair that with Keselowski to finish top 10. His top 10 odds are plus 105 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The implied odds of uh, plus 105 are 48.8%, whereas I have Keselowski at 53.8% to finish inside the top 10 this weekend. So once again, a big edge there. The way to do this is I would layer this bet where you have enough in the top 10 bet where if he finishes inside the top 10, you profit. But then you also add some onto the podium bet where if he finishes in the podium, you have a great day. So it's a, a scale bet, as always, scale it uh, based on the knowledge that there is a 47% chance, if my model's correct, that the top 10 bet does not cash and a larger chance, a 84% chance the podium bet does not cash. Please keep that in mind as you are allocating your bet scale. Don't overload on one driver and just don't overload on bets in general. But keep that in mind. And I would layer this here so you can benefit if he does finish top 10, you can profit there and then benefit a bit more if he does show upside and finish inside the top three. Again, I do think you could consider him 30 to one to win. Uh, and if, if you could get him 30 to one, I would take that. Did take that earlier on, but 24 to one right now at FanDuel. I think with these markets where they're at specifically, I would go the podium plus the top 10 being the correct way to play things. So those are my two bets for NASCAR this week in Richmond. Uh, Brad Keselowski to podium at plus 750 and to finish inside the top 10 at plus 105. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Once again, the schedule for next week, it'll still be the same. Tom Vecchio filling in for me all five days, both here and over on the solo shot. So thank you, Tom, a bunch for that help. We'll not have the video versions of these shows, but we'll have the podcast version on 
Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. So to get those as they are posted, follow Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom, but also make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Big thank you once again to Rob Friedman. You can check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja and find his work, uh, Peacock, MLB, MLB on Fox, and of course at FanDuel Sportsbook as well. Check out the Profit Boost on Parlays as well over at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you with your bets across this weekend, and I'll talk to you once again uh, Monday the 5th or 4th, whatever it is. I'll be back then. Tom Vecchio with you next week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 